Thank you. If you guys would uh, bow with me, well, you don't have to bow and close your eyes if you're driving or anything out there on the radio, <laughs> but uh, those here, if you can bow with me, I want to open us in the word of prayer. <laughs> Lord Jesus, we thank you a lot, Lord, for a chance to be here. <clears throat> and Lord, it truly does feel like holy ground to sit as a group of people and praise your holy name. And Lord Jesus, we know that that's exactly the way you intended it to be. Lord, that you draw your people closer together than any other kind of tie in this world. Lord, I just ask you to be with us right now as we as we look at a, a simple passage of Scripture in your Word, Lord. And I just pray that you be with me as a speaker, Lord, and hide me behind the cross. And Father God, I just ask that you might remove any kind of pride or any kind of ill gotten motive that Satan might try to slip in, Lord. And just let me have the right heart set and the right mindset, Father God. And and I just pray, Lord Jesus, that if there's somebody out there that <clears throat> that Your Word speaks to today, Lord, that they would respond. That You might give them the courage to step out, Father God, and, and to lay whatever they're holding on to at Your feet. And Lord, I just ask You to be with me, Lord, and I pray that if there's conviction needed in my life, then You convict me, Lord, and encourage me where encouragement's needed, Lord. And I just ask You to open my eyes, and I pray that for everybody here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> In my own uh, kind of little personal Bible study time, or most of the time early in the morning, I have a hard time getting very far away from the Psalms and the Proverbs. Uh, I guess they must be written for the simple-minded because they sure speak to me. And there's one specific psalm that I'd like to share with you today, and it's uh, it's very simple, but it's very complex all at the same time. Psalms 46 says this, and I want to read it to you to start out. It says, God is our refuge and our strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the most high dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at the break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts His voice and the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the works of the Lord. The desolation He has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth and He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. And I will be exalted among the nations and I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. That psalm really speaks to me because I seem to be prone to discouragement. It seems like every time in my life where it was a really high point or a really low point, I was really good at figuring out what might go wrong next. You know, instead of instead of praising God for the things that had went right, I was looking at what was going to fly apart in the next five minutes. And and I think oh, many of us, because of our humanity, is prone to that discouragement. You know, and uh, we uh, we get. We get to the point where we decide how we're going to fix it as a man instead of really looking to our refuge, which is God. And the psalmist says, God is my refuge and my strength. And we all understand that that a refuge is a stronghold in which we run to. God is our strength. He's our place to hide. He's our safe place. But then it says He's an ever-present help in trouble. Now that ever-present help thing, <clears throat> i gotta, I got to tell you, I've had a hard time wrapping my mind around it. I know that God is always there. You know, the Bible tells us Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And I understand He's always there, but sometimes it feels like He's a million miles away, you know. It feels like that my prayer goes up and hits the ceiling and comes right back down and lands at my feet. And I, I, I want to be with God, but I don't, I don't know how to get there. And that ever-present could very well be translated uh, probably even more accurately, a well-proven help. And I love that. That has really helped me understand that. Not only is God always with me, but God's track record is good. Amen. God has never failed to deliver His people. Sometimes I get discouraged and I worry about what might go right and I, and I say, you know, if this happened, boy, I'd be in trouble. Or if that happened, I don't know what I'd do. And I see people go through things and I say, I don't know if I can handle that if it happened to me. And, and I think we all do those things. But you know, we serve the God that delivered Noah through the most catastrophic flood known to man, who brought his people out of Egypt through plagues that 
cannot be duplicated and the world can't even explain. And His people walk through the sea and they walk through the river and we know that God's been in the lion's den and He's been in the fiery furnace. And, you know, we, we, he fed his, He fed His servants with the ravens and breads fell out of the sky and water shot up out of rocks. and He filled up every jar that the widow could borrow with an empty jug. We, we read about those stories. And, but what we don't understand is those are real people with real problems and God was big enough to deliver I read those things. You know, I, I read about the troops that dug the ditches in the desert land. God told them, I want you to dig this land full of ditches for tomorrow. Water's going to run down that hill. And water came out of nowhere. It didn't rain. And didn't nobody pour it down the hill. It just came down the hill out of absolutely nowhere because God always comes through. And in the Bible, when it says, therefore, you've got to pay careful attention. And he says, and, and I want to put that word in there God is our refuge and our strength. He's a well proven help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. And after you put that in there, after you realize God's track record, not only is he here, but he's good. Amen. Not only is he with you, but he has never, never failed his people. He's always come through, he's always kept his covenant. And the psalmist says, because God is that good, I'm not going to fear. He says, I, I'm not even going to fear though the earth give way. Now, we all know that the, ball, the Bible says that the earth is a ball suspended on nothing and it cannot be moved. The earth has never give way, but boy, it sure seems like my world was going to fall apart a time or two. And I think that's exactly what this guy's talking about. Even though it seems like the earth is going to stop spinning in your, in your world, I ain't going to fear, he says, because I know how good my God is. Amen. I'm not going to fear even when the mountains fall in the heart of the sea. Now, to my knowledge, at this point, there's never been a mountain fall into the heart of the sea. But it sure felt like sometimes that things were really going to fall apart. But he says, I'm not going to fear. Even if the mountains fall into the sea, my God's got this and He's good. <clears throat> if the waters roar and foam and the earths quake at their surging, when things get out of control, when it looks like that there is no hope left, I'm going to trust God, he says. Amen. Because He's good. Number four is, verse four there, it's really cool. It says, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. The neat thing about that is there is no river for Jerusalem. Jerusalem doesn't have a river. It's a long top of here. That river's God. God makes glad the city of God. His peace and His hope and His mercy has always been good enough. And He says that's the one place that won't be moved. When the earth falls and when the earth folds up, the mountains fall into the sea and everything just absolutely blows apart, my God says His people is going to be alright because He's enough to make them glad. He makes glad the city of God where He dwells and He's within her, it says. And then He goes on to say something that absolutely amazes me because I'm not good at it. It says, Be still and know that I am God. And I am now 36 years old and I don't think I've been still for longer than maybe 30 seconds at one time. I don't sleep still. I don't sit still. I can't do anything still. I just move around. I don't, I don't know. And I'm not very good at being still and knowing that God is God either. I'm always constantly trying to figure out how I'm going to fix my problems and I have a hard time with the fact that I can't fix my problems. And I think sometimes we read that be still and know and we think it means that God's saying just sit there and do nothing and I'll fix this. That's not what he's saying at all. And I was sharing this with Ricky and Gina earlier. We went out to lunch. And Joab was in a great battle. The, ar the army of God was in a great battle. Joab, the commander of David's army. You see, the Ammonites had done something that became a stench in David's nostrils, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 19. And when they figured that they had lost the favor of David, they decided they was going to strike first and just... Uh, go on ahead and wipe David off the map, you know, because we've already made him mad. We don't want to let him have the first move. And so they hired the Arameans who had a lot of chariots. And back in the day, if you had chariots, it was like army tanks in a day. That was the greatest military war weapon. And Joab looks out and he got him flanked. He looks on one side and there's the army of the Ammonites there. And he turns around and looks the other way and there's the army of the Arameans with chariots everywhere. 
And they're not prepared for this. You see, they didn't call this battle. They just come on all of a sudden. They're flanked and everybody's nervous. And the men look to Joab and they say, what are we going to do? And in, in 1 Chronicles 19.13, Joab says, we're going to be brave and we're going to fight for our people and for the city of God because the Lord will do whatever's right in His eyes. In other words, Joab said, we're going to do the best we can and we're going to trust the Lord with the best. They didn't, he didn't say, I tell you what we're going to do, we're just going to surrender and hope for the best because I don't want to die today. Joab said, we're going to fight with everything we got. And if the Lord wants us to win, we're going to win. And if He don't, that was the right thing anyway. And you know what? In our life, if we just be still and know that the greatest God, the most loving God, the most powerful God, and the only God that loved you enough to carry your sin to the top of Calvary's hill, and walk back down with a clear slate. Has got it. He's got this, you know. And, and the psalmist says, "I'm not going to fear." He says, "I'm not going to lay awake at night and worry about what tomorrow might bring, because my God's good, and He ain't never failed." And I I know that each and every person in this room, and each and every person out there listening, you got problems in your life, and you got unanswered questions. And God knows there's been all kinds of unanswered questions in my life. I created some of them, but your life's got the same. There's things out in front of you you can't really answer. You don't really know what's going to happen if that happens or what's going to happen if this happens. And we all fear what the doctor's report might be. Every week we pray for people at our church that's got upcoming tests. And we all fear that the doctor might give us the C word or, you know, and tell you that you got something that the medical field don't have any answer for. We all fear those things. We don't know what's going to come about tomorrow. But we do know this. Our God is a very, very, very well-proven provider and protector. And today we don't have very much certainty about what the world is going to do tomorrow. At this place, I don't know that anything would surprise me that the world is going to do tomorrow. But God won't have any surprises. Whatever He does will be right. And it will be good. And we can trust Him. You know, if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior and you're out there today or you're here today and you just love listening to the wholesome music and the atmosphere. And I, I tell people, it's a little bit addictive, I think. I know it's, it is in our church and it is in a lot of churches just to be around the right kind of people. I, I, to me, it just keeps me coming back to here people talking and laughing and to be in an atmosphere where you don't have to worry about what your kids are going to hear and you don't have to worry about everybody trying to get in all they can and take home all they can but everybody's just there for one reason and it's not selfish it's just to serve the Lord that, that's addictive and, and I think sometimes we're not careful we feed off other people's relationship until we look up and we realize we never did have one ourselves and if you're listening today or you're here today and you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, but you want that peace that the psalmist had that I'm not going to fear because I know God's got it. You can have that because Jesus wants to be your stronghold and He wants to be your refuge and He wants to be your deliverer. And maybe you are here. Maybe you're out there and you know Jesus is your personal Lord and Savior, but everything that you've promised you'd lay at His feet, you just carried right back to your seat. Because I had done it so many times, and it's not even funny. And I tell God, Lord, I'm going to let you have this. And then I spend the next several weeks just worrying and worrying and worrying about it. And That's sort of like saying, God, I'm not real sure you can deal with this. I don't really know if I trust you enough to let this just be at your feet and you know I think what the psalmist was trying to say is I'm not going to ask God to do it and lay awake all night the psalmist said you know what I'm not going to go along with everybody else's worries I got the same kind of worries but I'm going to trust my God because he's that good Amen. and maybe you're here today and you're packing something you just can't pack no farther and maybe you're out there and you're packing something you just can't pack no farther you don't have to pack it anymore because, you know, I love that song when that they sang, I, God, you know, He's a chain breaker. He's a pain taker. He's a great deliverer. He's been really good and He's going to be really good. 
If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you just want somebody to pray with you. You've heard the numbers give a lot of times, but you call into the radio station. You don't have to call just to make a pledge. If you want somebody to pray with you, there's all kinds of people here who'd love to do it. And if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, we'd absolutely love to introduce you to Him. We can't save you, but we can introduce you to the God that can. Amen. If you're carrying something you can't pack anymore, it ain't never going to get no better. You get real and get honest with God. No, I think being real is something that the Church of America forgot a long time ago. We put on our false faces and we go to church and we act like everything's okay and we don't want everybody to know that we got big problems in our life that we can't fix and we're scared to death and we we don't want to ask anybody to really pray with us. You know, we just. Uh, we just kind of meander through the service with a broken heart and a big fake smile. But I don't think this guy, when he wrote this song, was fake. I don't think he was denying that he had problems. I just think he claimed that his God was bigger than his problem. And if you've got something that you have never laid at the feet of God in the day, I pray you do that. I'm going to turn it back over to the singing, but before I do, if, uh, if I could just lead us in a prayer, I would. Uh, if you can bow, if you're a place you can bow with me, then please do so. Lord Jesus, I just thank You for this time, Lord. As I said, Lord Jesus, this song is so simple. And Lord, it means a lot to me. Father God, and I wish I was better at being still and knowing that You're God. Lord, oftentimes I'm just like the people of Israel. I walk up to the Red Sea and say, Lord, why didn't You just let me die in Egypt? Why did You make me walk all the way out here to die? Father God, I, I realize that Lord Jesus, You bring me to seas just to show me how big of a God You are. Because there's never been a sea that You ever led Your people through that You couldn't get them across. No matter whether it was physical or emotional, it don't matter what kind of problems in front of us, God, You're big enough. And You love us that much. Lord Jesus, that You want nothing more than to be our stronghold and our deliverer, our refuge, and our ever-present help and trouble. God, You, you have a great track record, Lord. You are very dependent. I just pray today, Lord Jesus, that we can entrust ourselves to You. Lord, I pray that I can lay my fears and my worries at Your feet. And I, and I can allow Your joy to fill my life. And I can spend my days pointing to Your glory and praising Your holy name for my deliverance instead of spending my days fearing that tomorrow You won't be there because You've already promised You will. Father God, I just ask today that that we might glorify Your holy name. And I pray You pray for the Lord Jesus. In my prayer, I pray that You would bless this radio station. Father God, that You would just put Your heads around it and keep it going. Lord, Satan's going to throw his fiery darts at our churches. He's going to throw his fiery darts at this radio station because he don't want Your name to be proclaimed. Lord, we just pray that You might glorify Yourself here. That what happens here might bring honor to Your name. In Jesus' name we pray.